October's greetings. I'm your host, Dr. Wolfilo, with a review of Hellraiser 2022, now streaming on Hulu. Hey, that kind of rhymed. I... I didn't ask for this. But you did. I was very skeptical of this movie, because the last 20, 25 years of Hellraiser movies have been less than stellar. The last 10 years especially. For a while, these movies, well, these movies have been complete dog shit, to put it lightly. Also, I was nervous because this was a streaming-only Hellraiser movie, and I'm not a streaming guy. To me, streaming should always be an option available for folks who don't want to or aren't able to go to the movies or collect DVDs, but being able to just buy a copy of the film or a ticket to see it in a theater should always be be on the table. This new Hellraiser may eventually get a release available for purchase, or it could just be held hostage on a streaming platform forever, maybe even delisted like we're starting to see. The new Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out nearly a year ago, and it's still exclusively on Netflix, with no physical release in sight, even though all the other films before it got physical releases. With director streaming movies, there are some great ones that streamers will secure or finance in order to drive subscriptions, but more often, movies go direct to a streaming service just because they're especially shitty, to the point where there's no hope of them ever making money in a theater. So they're just used to pad out a streaming app's library and Dead. This was another factor that made me nervous about this new Hellraiser movie, but I'm happy to say that Hellraiser 2022 is the first good film in the franchise in a long time. Our gifts are boundless. I don't want them. Yes, you do. The Hulu Hellraiser isn't a remake of the original film. It's very much a reboot of the franchise that can be watched without any experience with these series. But simultaneously, since the franchise's chronology is so flexible, with villains untouched by the passage of time, with so many numerous Cenobites, some resembling each other but still being different, you could say that this film is another sequel that takes place in the same world as the original series. It's really whatever your pleasure is. <laughs> Speaking of which, the plot of the film concerns yet another jackass misguidedly seeking pleasures in all the wrong places. Some seek it through the bottle, some through a whore's embrace. But the exceedingly wealthy Roland Voigt seeks pleasure through demonic puzzle boxes, as one does. Grant me this audience. Four years later, we meet Riley, an addict in recovery, but just barely, who, along with her boyfriend Trevor, attempts to make some easy money by stealing assets left behind in a warehouse by the now missing Roland Voigt. What the couple find instead is a Lemarchian's box, which they still hope to fence. I'll see if I can find some kind of appraiser and we'll, uh, we'll split whatever cash we can get from it. Yeah? But things get worse when Riley's brother, Matthew, who may or may not be gay, I'm not sure, banishes Riley from the apartment for just being a total mess. Pack your shit. Get the fuck out of my house. And you know what a recovering drug addict definitely needs? Being made homeless! But hey, at least she still has a car. It'll give her a place to crash until she sells it for crack. The purchasing of crack never happens, though. Instead, Riley cracks open the puzzle box, unleashing from within it, goths. Uh, I mean, Cenobites. Bring us another. Matthew attempts to walk back on banishing Riley from his apartment, but Matthew himself is banished from our reality and claimed by the Cenobites as their first victim. And it's left up to Riley to solve the mystery of the puzzle box, save her brother, and maybe even get laid in the process. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, give her a good railing. I love it. <sighs> Hellraiser 2022's plot is an upgrade after so many clunker sequels, but it's still nothing special, even for the franchise, and especially compared to Clive Barker's original writing. The film is populated with a cast of young adult characters that may not be total stereotypes, but they're not really memorable or interesting to me at least. Nora, the roommate. Set us plenty. I couldn't tell you anything about what kind of a person Nora is. She just feels like an example of an underwritten addition to the cast to pad out the film's torches. Which is a shame, because if you have strongly defined characters in a movie like Hellraiser, who they are can guide the methodology of how they get taken out. Cruel irony. What is it you pray for? <laughs> But the characters and story are mostly simplistic, except for some neat character twists in the final act. Honestly, things don't get really interesting story-wise until the finale. Just let me die. There is no retreat. 
once a threshold has been crossed. Even with the main character Riley, played by Odessa Azion, being a sort of unconventional heroine performed well, the concept behind her flawed character still feels like familiar territory explored through Mia in the Evil Dead remake. First Matt, I'm fucking clean! Hey, I worry about you, Riley. You gotta Get stick to this- room! The one really interesting twist to this Hellraiser movie's take on the material that stood out to me particularly, though, was in its handling of the Le Marchand box. Instead of just being a MacGuffin that propels the story along, motivating the characters, the solving of the box is integral to the plot. It has different configurations beyond just lament. With each configuration, a sacrifice must be made to reach the next, so the characters have to learn the rules of the box, treating it like a game, anticipating and responding to things in order to win. The box Fox is the real star of the movie, and it's nice to see it as more than just a cool prop this time around. To whoever holds the final configuration, you get there, then you choose your ultimate desire. The plot is otherwise pretty basic, but what really makes the movie work is in how it's executed, which is ultimately what mostly matters with any horror movie. The simplicity of a horror story can be the perfect springboard for ideas visually, acoustically, and atmospherically. The huge spaces between the writing of a horror movie. And I gotta say, the Hellraiser reboot is a pretty classy looking film. When you can actually see what's happening, of course. The film looks great, but it's lit extremely darkly. I watched this movie on a Dolby Vision display in a bright HDR mode in a dark room, and even I had some trouble seeing what was happening in a lot of shots. This is definitely the darkest Hellraiser movie yet, but in the literal sense, not the figurative. But when you can see what's happening, the film looks fantastic. Much more expensive looking than the shoestring sequels we've been treated to over the years. And the score is hauntingly atmospheric like you'd hope from a Hellraiser film. Even mixing in some classic themes. But what about the execution of the film's horror? The true stars? The Cenobites? Well, they're a mixed bag. Initially, they're treated more subtly as they claim victims. The world surrounding them gradually transitions in the Cenobites' hell dimension, which is a cool effect, but eventually the demons are much more overtly introduced. There's no music in that. Jamie Clayton plays a Hell Priest, aka Pinhead, that's much more accurate to the original novella, and while she's no Doug Bradley, she does a good job performing her own spin on the character that stands out from the original. We will not be denied. Your blood is in our hands now. At the same time, I have mixed feelings about the design of Pinhead. The underlying concept is cool and unique. Instead of an actual cloak, torn flesh is fashioned into a robe-like configuration. But the issue I have with Pinhead in this film is, well, the Pinhead. The prosthetics of Pinhead just make the head of the actress look too big. It reminds me of the awkward-looking, puffy-faced Pinhead from Resurrection. It has nothing to do with the actress. There's just too much prosthetic on her and not enough of her actual face beneath the makeup. Fortunately, Pinhead isn't a very expressive character, so the makeup isn't much of a hindrance on the performance, but it just looks kind of clunky. Perhaps they were wrong about you. The other designs of the Cenobites in the film are solid all around, though. You've got the return of fan favorite, the Chatterer, but the real standout Cenobites are the more original designs. The coolest to me is the one guy who just has a skin face and air where the rest of his head is supposed to be. At the same time, while the makeup and designs look cool, they do feel a little too heightened to me, too over the top even for a Hellraiser movie. Like they're exaggerated Todd McFarlane action figures based on classic Clive Barker designs. Still really cool, but it just looks a little weird in this more grounded feeling horror movie. Also, not a big fan of how the Cenobites are handled. They do a lot of chasing people around, which just feels like cheapening them as villains, turning them into more conventional horror monsters. <laughs> Their whole thing is warping time and space, putting victims into difficult conundrums where their torture is a consequence. They aren't chasing motherfuckers, they design situations where you come to them. The torture scenes are pretty fantastic though, especially the wire gag. Yeah, you know, the movie's got some really good gore all around. If you think about it though, the plot of this Hellraiser is kinda reminiscent of the live-action Scooby-Doo movie. A group of young adults are drawn to an isolated place populated by monsters fixated on an ancient puzzle-like mechanism. Scooby-Doo just keeps getting ripped off left and right. You have chosen a life of regret. 
The Hellraiser reboot on Hulu is a solid reintroduction to a long-suffering franchise. It's far from perfect, but it has some cool twists and ideas that mix things up and make the Cenobites fresh again, which is especially impressive given that this is the 11th film in the series. I give Hellraiser 2022 a kinda dark shot out of a shot where you can kinda see things a little better. The future of films is that they'll be shot darker and the dialogue will be almost impossible to hear, and I for one welcome it. If you liked this video, like it, and if you loved it, click the subscribe and bell buttons for more vids. I'd also like to thank these fine folks pledged my shout-out tier on Patreon for all their kind support. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without all their help. Thank you for watching, see you next time. Dr. Wolfiel is signing out.